In this short talk, we will be covering the CT appearance of bowel obstruction in children with emphasis on common or unique pathologies seen in children and certain mimics. First, a word on technique. Always use girth or size adjusted milliamperage settings and IV is, contrast is strongly recommended for uh, CT in acute abdomen situations. In our practice, we often use positive oral contrast. However, if the child is vomiting or not likely to tolerate oral contrast, we rely on fluid-filled bowel as negative contrast. Rectal contrast is rarely used uh, in current situations. Here are the basic CT signs of bowel obstruction. As we will see on subsequent slides, some of these signs may be misleading. To begin with, here are two children with acute small bowel obstruction following recent surgery. The image on your left shows dilated proximal small bowel and absence of oral contrast in more distal bowel. The images on the right of your screen from a different child show an acute caliber change in the right lower quadrant, and obstruction is the result of adhesions in both of these children. Now, on initial inspection, the images on this child suggest a closed loop obstruction. There is contrast material in dilated proximal bowel and a loop of unopacified dilated bowel in the center of the image. However, this cannot be so since there is contrast in collapsed distal bowel and in the colon. The obstruction was caused by external compression of bowel by a large duplication cyst. Here are two other patients with dilated, fluid-filled, obstructed bowel. The patient on the left of the screen has a fluid-filled appendix, and the small bowel obstruction was caused by a ruptured appendix and uh, secondary inflammatory changes, a common cause of small bowel obstruction in children. The slide, the child on the right of the screen, shows a dilated tubular structure on both sides of the pelvis of different densities. The small bowel obstruction was caused by inflammation due to a tubo ovarian abscess, the lower density fluid-filled loop of bowel. Here are three patients with intermittent vomiting with intraluminal lesions causing obstruction. At this point, pause the video and take a minute to look at each of these patients. The first patient is a 14-year-old girl with intermittent pain and vomiting, has multiple filling defects throughout the small bowel, and a small bowel, small bowel intussusception. On physical exam, she had melanotic spots on her lips as the result of Poitz-Jaeger syndrome and multiple hamartomatous polyps filling the small bowel and causing increasing small bowel obstruction as they grew. This second child is a 12-year-old boy with intermittent abdominal pain and vomiting and has a large intraluminal uh, filling defect that is obstructing the proximal bowel. At surgery, we see a small bowel, small bowel in a susception with a large lead point found to be a juvenile polyp. This third child is a six-year-old boy with abdominal pain and showing an intussusception in the lower abdomen. At surgery, an inverted Meckel's diverticulum filled with mesenteric fat was found as the cause of obstruction. Meckel's diverticula are a cause of obstruction that is more common in younger children but can occur at any age. Here is another example of intussusception causing obstruction. The child has cystic fibrosis and crampy abdominal pain. A mucus-filled distended appendix serving as a lead point is seen in a colocolonic intussusception causing small bowel obstruction. A large fluid-filled uh, appendix or the distal intestinal obstruction syndrome can be a cause of intussusception and obstruction in cystic fibrosis. Now, let's talk about the CT diagnosis of malrotation. 
in normal patients, the duodenum crosses the midline between the aorta and the superior mesenteric artery and rises to the left upper quadrant to the duodenal jejunal junction. In patients with malrotation, the duodenum does not cross the midline. Here, a fluid-filled duodenum is to the right of the abdomen and approaches the midline, but never crosses the midline. And there is no duodenum seen between the aorta and superior mesenteric artery on this sagittal reconstruction. An upper GI series confirms the right-sided small bowel and malrotation. This other patient with malrotation has fluid-filled duodenum, as shown by the black arrows, to the right of midline, not crossing behind the superior mesenteric artery. This is a reliable but not 100% finding in malrotation. Now, here we have three patients with a mesenteric swirl sign. The mesenteric swirl is caused by corkscrewing of mesenteric vessels around the superior mesenteric artery during volvulus. The first patient clearly has malrotation with volvulus and corkscrewing of vessels and bowel surrounding the superior mesenteric artery. However, this patient does not have malrotation or volvulus. The finding is simply a lymphatic malformation at the base of the mesentery simulating a volvulus. This third patient, there are three patients here with normal rotation and no volvulus, where a normal jejunal branch of the superior mesenteric vein courses counterclockwise around the superior mesenteric artery. The mesenteric swirl seen with malrotation is always clockwise, even in Australia. Here we have three patients with vomiting with the same diagnosis causing small bowel obstruction. At this point, pause the video for a moment and review the images. This 16-year-old girl with vomiting presents for a CT and we notice that the bowel appears to be encapsulated on the, right, on the left side of the abdomen and the mesenteric vessels cascade to the left. Normally, mesenteric vessels course inferiorly. This patient has a paraduodenal hernia. This second patient, a 16-year-old boy presenting with vomiting, has a bilobed uh, appearance to the encapsulated bowel with a centrally placed um, collection of mesenteric vessels coming out of the orifice of the um, paraduodenal hernia. Finally, a third portion, person with an internal hernia, we see dilated fluid-filled small bowel with a collection of vessels in a starburst appearance to the right of the midline caused by compression of the vessels, the mesenteric vessels, as they exit the orifice of the duodenal hernia. The, the internal hernia. And here on the plain film, we can see dilated stacked loops of small bowel representing the small bowel obstruction. The CT signs of internal hernia are displayed here, and they are the starburst uh, appearance of the mesenteric vascularity, a displaced mesenteric arcade to the side where the hernia occurs, encapsulated bowel, and closed loop obstruction. Here we have a 13-year-old male with vomiting and a history of prior surgery. And we see the small bowel fecalization sign. This refers to dilated distal bowel appearing to contain fecal material and is often seen at the most distal point of obstructed bowel, just proximal to the site of obstruction. And here we can see a sharp transition zone right distal to the fecalized bowel as a result of adhesions in this post-operative child. Now, here are two additional cases with the small bowel fecalization sign. The 13-year-old male had a history of prior surgery. We see uh, a fecal fecalized distal loop of bowel here. 
because of adhesions. However, the 30-year-old autistic child also has a similar appearance of fecalized distal bowel, but has also the same appearance in a distended abdomen as the result of a obstructing trichobezoar in the, um, in the distal bowel. So fecalization is a sensitive sign, but not specific. Here are two cases of acute colonic obstruction. Take a moment to review the images. The first case is a 26-year-old girl with mental retardation and cerebral palsy and vomiting. She has a focally dilated right colon with air-filled dilated small bowel and a mesenteric swirl sign in the right lower quadrant rather than in the midline in the upper abdomen as seen with malrotation and volvulus. We see it in the right lower quadrant as the result of, fecal vo of cecal volvulus and mesenteric twisting. Here, a second child, a 17-year-old with cerebral palsy and abdominal pain, we see a dilated, fluid-filled left colon and collapsed distal sigmoid in the pelvis. Uh, we also note an acute change in caliber in the distal colon in this patient with a sigmoid volvulus. How useful is CT in the diagnosis of bowel obstruction? A study in 2012 showed that the uh, CT led to the correct diagnosis in 91% of patients. It identified the site of obstruction in 78%, identified the cause of obstruction in 68%, and showed that the small bowel feces sign was predictive of the need for bowel resection in, uh, in the majority of patients. So CT is a very um, useful tool in all of these parameters, even in children. I'd like to leave you with some take-home points, which are that the patient age and clinical history are very important in distinguishing the causes of small bowel obstruction, um, regardless of the imaging modality we use. Positive GI contrast is not mandatory and often contraindicated in a child who is actively vomiting. Multiplanar imaging with CT is often helpful in identifying the location cause and potential complications of bowel obstruction. Thank you.